so happy to chat to my next guest because he's back in the UFC. He's going to be fighting Billy Quarantillo. UFC fight night, March 23rd. It is right around the corner. It's Yusuf Zalal back here on the program. Yusuf, how are you, man? I am good, my man. How you doing? I am doing awesome. Congratulations on getting back in. You know, you're one of those guys, and, and I talk to a lot of fighters, obviously. I do a lot of interviews. You're one name that always comes up being like, Yusuf's got to be back in the UFC. He's got to be back in the UFC because you had a bit of a weird stint in the UFC the first time. We'll get into all that in a sec, but first, when did you find out about this? When did you uh, find out that you were back in the UFC fighting Billy Q? So, funny story is I was uh, in the Ultimate Fighter. Oh, I heard about all that. Trust me. Because you know who else was on the Ultimate Fighter? Someone I know quite well, Jamie Siraj, who I know also didn't get uh, selected as well. So, my understanding is, not to answer your own question here, but, like, I heard that the coaches, like, came in and kind of picked some of their, their talent. So, guys like yourself and Jamie didn't get selected on the show. So, that, that's what happened, right? I don't know what happened. All I know is, like, hey, you're an alternate. And in my head, I was like... Man, I came all the way here to like sh showcase my skills against the best in the world, because I kind of like you know we were at the hotel together, so I kind of saw what the te uh, like the opponents and all that stuff looked like, you know. So they brought in some high talent too, you know. It's not like a, a easy peasy talent, you know. So I was like, okay, coming in there, and I was like, okay, this is a perfect time for me to really show the UFC and like, hey, I came in here even though I was in the UFC before, but I came in here a whole new version of Yusef, you know, and then to really do it at the, against the highest level two times before the finale and all that stuff. So I was ready to prove a point to myself and then to everybody else too. So, and then I get the, like the news, like, Hey, you're an alternate. And I was like, you know, I was like kind of heartbroken. I was like, are you kidding me, man? Like mm. I came all the way here to, to get the job done and, and really get everything going. And literally 23 hours later, my manager gives me a call and then he said, yeah, we're in. And man, you talk about the happiness. He went from sad to like, really like, ah, whatever, man, this sucks, blah, blah, to like the happiest person, you know? So I'm very excited. And that's our whole story, kind of how it happened. Yeah, that's crazy. So a couple of things about, I mean, first off, this is a way better situation. Like you're in the UFC, you don't have to sit in a house, you, you get to check your phone and watch TV and all that cool stuff, stuff that you couldn't do when, when you were over there. I mean, this is a lot better of a situation, I imagine. Um, were there any other UFC vets on the show? That was the other thing, because obviously like you, you were in the UFC or, or you were the only one, because I thought maybe they did what they did last season where they had a couple of UFC vets, right? No, I think this season is all like uh, international. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So obviously I'm from Morocco and re representing my country and all that, but I'm pretty sure it was all uh, international guys. So I don't know what the theme exactly is, but I the only guy that was in the UFC to me that was a vet, to be honest, because I was I got called up for the last season. And, oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Okay. So they called me for the last season, and they were like. Hey, one guy had a problem. Can you make weight? I was like, yeah, no problem. And then like, got it. Like we were ready to go. I started cutting weight because he was at 35 and all that stuff. So that was very hard, but I was like, yeah, I was ready to go. But they were like, oh, they figured it out. And then they got the situation handled. So that's why I didn't get in, but I was ready to go. Okay. Well, there you go. So again, all this stuff just to get you back in the UFC, which is, which is just crazy. So in terms of like, um, you know, you signing the contract and everything, like when did that happen? Cause that, like, I think we found out, I want to say I heard about it like a day or two ago. When, when did you find out? Uh, literally the same. I found out on okay. Saturday. Okay. Gotcha. That must've been a good weekend yeah. then. Uh, fi finding oh, out that it's, you're, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great weekend. Yeah. So, so you're back in there. Okay. That's cool. And were you pretty familiar with Billy Q before taking this fight? Like he's been in the UFC for a while, but like how familiar were you with him? Uh, definitely super familiar with him because obviously one, he fought my teammate, Alex. Oh, that's right. And yes. Hernandez. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then obviously watching him fight Barboza. Barboza is like, obviously I always watch that guy fight as well because I like his style. I like his you know, just fighting in general. So uh, obviously, so I definitely known about him and, and obviously he brings, he brings a different style that's very exciting to people and exciting to the fans. So yeah, I definitely familiar with him for sure. How do you feel like stylistically you match up against Billy Q? It's definitely a good matchup for me. You know, I, I think my style, what I bring and what I like my IQ and all that stuff, it's, it's going to be a lot for him to, to handle for sure. But I'm very excited about this fight, man. You know, he, he comes in and brings in that, that he, and then like really brawling and all that stuff. So it kind of motivates me even more to, to really showcase my skills and like really have some fun in that fight. I'm, I'm ready to have some fun. So you mentioned being uh, in Vegas for the ultimate fighter. Like, when did you get back to Denver? Like what type of camp have you had, like sort of leading into this? 
So I was in Vegas for a week, but obviously before that I was training the whole time. So okay. obviously every day, twice, three times a day and all that stuff. So obviously I always been ready, but obviously I went to Vegas and the only thing I could do is literally run. Uh, they had a little gym, you know, and then they had us do mitts a little bit with some guys, like two different coaches, but that's about it. Like not nothing else beside that. But I think my body like really needed that, if that makes any sense. Like, mm-hmm. So like I was like peaking way too much. So kind of like slow it down and then go back to it. But I got back to Denver on Sunday. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And you still got a week and a bit here, right? To, to kind of do some training. Is it mainly like the lightweight guys? Like who, who do you mainly work with over there? Like Alex Hernandez comes to mind. Who are some of the names you get to train with over there at Factory X? Actually, my main training partner is Isaac Dalgorian, which he fights this Saturday. Yeah, he's he's been uh, one of the best things to happen to me in my career to be honest it's uh i'm i'm very happy that he came to factory x and we get to help each other in obviously i come from a striking background he comes from a wrestling background so for me and him to really put our games together and really improving our games that that that's been beneficial so much it's oh my god okay there we go now uh weight cutting are you not doing ramadan right now so people are crazy this is to all my muslims so i'm doing ramadan so the 14 days that i'm not doing right now i do it after my fight oh gotcha okay smart move because again like i can only imagine how much that would i know i know Bilal muhammad's done it and a few other fighters but like I, that's got to be tough especially when you're getting back in the ufc you can't eat properly right because you can't you have to fast basically all day sunrise to sunset right yep no food no water so i done it before when i fought sean woodson Oh wow! When I fought okay. Sean in the UFC, that was in Ramadan. This is why I'm not I'm not doing it again. And I was like, obviously the opportunity came in on first day of Ramadan, right? So it's like, well, just about the first day of Ramadan. So I was like, in my head, I was like, this is a big opportunity. Let's go, let's go, prove to myself and all, like really go show out in this fight, and then enjoy the Ramadan after and really have some fun. That's why you see a lot of guys fight before March, uh, like earlier March, because they know Ramadan is coming. So obviously that'll be me in the future, but now this opportunity come in, I can't say no to. Is that something you're allowed to do where you can push the dates? Is that like within the rules? I don't know. Obviously I'm not. Muslim. So it's, uh, our pastors, we call them sheikhs. So there's like different opinions and different, uh, things they say. Some of them say you can't, some of them say you can, but obviously, uh, there's, things you have to do when when you can, right? So like for me, for example, I have to donate every day that 14 days that I'm not going to fast that I'm going to do after Ramadan. So people are going to be done 14 days before me, but I'm just going to have 14 after. So I got to donate every day to people to break their fast. So poor people, like let's say there's a poor person. So you like whatever you're going to eat that day or to break your fast, that you give to that person. So that's how that kind of works for the 14 days. So I basically donate every day for 14 days. And then obviously after that, after my fight, I finish the second part of Ramadan. And then after Ramadan is over, I do my 14 days that I missed. Gotcha. Okay. Good for you, man. Sticking with it. It's uh, it's very tough, but like you said, big opportunity here getting back in the UFC. Um, Your corner. Well, I imagine Mark Montoya, who's going to be in the cage with you for your fight. Do you know that yet? Actually, yeah, I have uh, David Unama. Uh, oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 one of my other training partners as well. So he's one of my main training partners as well. So I train with him, and obviously I I coach him. I help him uh, get ready for fights as well. So like I do one on one sessions with him and stuff like that. Me and Mark really work with him a lot, and obviously he's been a, a great addition to the team as well. So him and Isaac has been a very great addition to the team. Yusuf, how's this fight playing out? How do you see it going down March twenty third? Man, it's gonna be it's gonna be fireworks for sure, man. I think, uh, like you said, like Billy, you always brings out the fight out of people. He either breaks people or, or bring them to fight, you know. So, and to break me is gonna take a lot, you know. And and I'm very excited to be back in one in the 145 division and two to be come back from my revenge for Ilya Tapoya. That's that's my my main guy that I'm coming for. Yeah, and good segue there because, you know, one of the things that people talk about with you and I agree with them, I mean, you had a weird UFC run the first time, including having to fight Ilya Tapoya. What was it like seeing him win the title? Um, just, you know, because that's, you know, of all losses to have in your resume, that's not a bad one considering this guy just knocked out Alex Volkanovsky. Man, all those losses and all the run in the UFC I had, that was a straight talent. That was not... 
confidence. That was not the maturity. That was I was immature. I was young, young and dumb. And you know, they like you're still working hard, but you're plateauing in, in different areas. You know, it's not like that. So I know what my skills are, and I know what I'm capable of. You know, so as soon as I saw Ilya won, I know I was like, that's extra motivation for me to come back and really showcase my skill and to show showcase my experience and my maturity that I've been the last. Uh, how long has it been since I've been in the UFC? Three years? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the Taporia fight, by the way, was uh, 2020, October of 2020. That was a long so time four ago. Year, almost four years. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, man. It's like to, to really come back and really show my growth and do all that stuff. Obviously, number one is fighting Billy and really get to showcase that. That's the most important part. And then after that, I think the storyline is there. You know, it's, it's a beautiful storyline and it's a beautiful comeback. And I can't wait to do that. What do you remember about that fight with Ilya? Because it was close. Like it wasn't like you know, like like it was. It's not like he finished you or anything. Like it went the distance, right? Yeah, he hit me one time. Trust me, he, he everybody that he fought, he, it looked like a truck ran through them. But, uh, bro, that that whole fight was a weird story. So, not a lot of people know this. So I fly to Abu Dhabi, and I'm ready to fly out, and then I land in Abu Dhabi, and I get a call that says, "Hey." your opponent uh, got out, uh, we've, we got you a new opponent. And I was supposed to fight Song, uh, Song Wong Choi, or whatever his name is. Yep, and then they were like, oh, he got sick or something. We get you Ilya Tapoya, which is like, he was like an 11 and all when he fought me or something. So I was like, all right, whatever, man, cool. And as soon as I get to the plane, coach was like, hey, go to bed. I was like, go to bed. It's 12 o'clock, coach. He was like, yeah, go to bed because it's, uh, uh, they find it at American time, so it's around this time. And I was like, all right, so I try to sleep. And then that's during the quarantine and COVID, which is seven days in a room by myself. Right. I had no coaches. I about because that. Mark, Mark was there by himself and all this. I'm not the guy to make excuses and all that stuff. It, 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 like, I learned so much from that fight. But the crazy part is, on fight day, Mark woke me up. He knocked on the door and he was like, hey, we got to be downstairs in five minutes. And I just woke up. Oh, man. I, bro, I was this, this, and that. And then literally you go downstairs, wrap your hands, and take you to the arena. So I didn't know what to expect when I fought Ilya. Obviously, I got hit with the first shot. And I was like, all right. Like, that's why you guys saw a lot of movement, you know. And I think I'm one of the best guys at making people miss and moving and making them really frustrated. I mean, he's the only – you've never seen wrestling from Ilya in the last seven fights mm -hmm. except me. Yeah. So it's like, it, like I, I bring different tools and different weapons to the fight game. So that was kind of the whole story about the Abu Dhabi fight. But man, he, he's definitely, he was strong and obviously he got improved a lot too. You know, a lot of people don't give him that as well. Like he did improve a lot from my fight to his, to, to now obviously a world champion. For sure. Uh, gotta ask this just because I think people kind of noticed this over, over the weekend there. Uh, Macy Barber fought last weekend. I noticed there was two photos on her Instagram where you're doing a video ah. call with her. Is there ah. anything there, Yusuf? Any, anything you want to tell us here in this interview? Because ah, she put it out there. I could see if this was something private, but it was out there and people are asking questions. Ah, what's what's going on there? You do your little detective work over there. Huh? A little bit. Hey, listen, there was two There was two photos of her on her Instagram, and one of them, I could tell she was talking to you man. on a video chat. So so what's going on there? Oh, interesting, man. I can, I can be that guy, but like, man, you should just ask her, you know, the interview. But, you know, me, me and her, we're, we're, we're having a thing, you know. Uh, she's, uh, again, like I said, she's a great person. She's a great human being, you know. So, and we're having fun and really enjoying life, and that's, that's what I can say, you know. Because I got... A lot of personal things going on in my life that not a lot of people know about, you know, but mm. uh, she's, she's kind of calming my ass down and really making, keeping me in a straight lane. That's good. And you guys know each other because she used to train at Factory X, right? I remember that back in the day, right? So did you just always yeah. keep in touch? Yeah. yeah. Well, not, not that much, but she, she kind of got in contact with me after, before her last fight and we kind of started talking and all that stuff and it kind of moved on for there. She's still a little feisty one that she is, but yeah, we're, we're, 
We're, we're doing good, my man. Okay, good, good. Just uh, just making sure again. I, this isn't TMZ or anything. Hey, how's but, uh, how's it going? I, 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 yeah. you, you came at me good with that one right there. Yeah. Okay. Hey, maybe you should ask her when you do the interview. Aren't you I, the interview hey, listen, if you talk, okay, t- t- I'll tell you this then. I reached out to her for an interview before and after the fight. I haven't heard anything back. So next time you talk to her, you tell her that I want to do a quick interview with her because we've been doing interview. I've interviewed her as long as I've interviewed you. So. Oh, all right. I got you. I got you. How okay, about this? You, you'll get interviewed the next day or two. Okay. There we go. I, li- I like the promise. I, I got, I got two more things for you. Okay. First thing. What is the difference between Yusuf Zalal that's in the UFC in 2024 than the one that left the UFC as a bantamweight? I forgot you had that one fight at bantamweight. Um, what's I the difference? I won that fight, by the way. The oh, black chair, I know, yeah. Fight. Yeah, I, I won that fight. Uh, the difference is the maturity and the confidence. I think that's the biggest thing in, and you guys will see what I'm talking about, because I can fight a lot of different styles, but sometimes the styles that I need to fight, I don't need to do it if that makes any sense it's like the styles like can happen okay this i it takes somebody down i don't think they've seen that much of striking of my striking background in the ufc to be honest if you thought about it the only striking they saw was maybe what's his name um uh, not really not not anybody to be honest maybe uh peter barrett that's probably one of the only time but that was mostly ground too so I think I think you get to you get to see the striking and the confidence and the aggression, uh, the aggressive Yusuf and the aggressive that kickboxing style like from M- Morocco and all that stuff. So that's kind of that's why I'm I'm very excited to to bring that back and really show the 2.0. By the way, are you ever going to go down to bantamweight again, or you think you're good at 145? I I kind of had to talk with coach and and he was like, obviously I I've grown a little bit more, right? I was 23 when I was in the UFC. So I obviously I got a little bit more muscle. I, at least I think, goddamn. But uh, yeah, I got a little, little more muscle, you know, and this and that. So w- we'll see. And then I got two teammates that are like top, uh, like top twenty in the world. So yeah. Oh yeah, so, Martinez you know, and wanna, Gutierrez. Yeah, maybe of course. We'll get yeah. into that conversation too. But right now, let's just stick with forty-five and be happy at forty-five. This is gonna be the easiest part of the interview. Who's your favorite uh, athlete outside of combat sports? I, ooh, Lewis Hamilton. Great choice. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Ooh, you know what? Knives Out. Never seen it. I'll have to check it out. What's your favorite uh, TV show? Ooh. Drive to Survive. What's your favorite cheat meal? Especially after Ramadan, I'm sure. Cheeseburger, brother. Cheeseburger. Favorite comedian? Kevin Hart. Favorite travel destination? I don't travel that much, but if I would, I would go to... Marrakesh. Where's that? Morocco. Oh, I was gonna. I, I was figure you were gonna say Morocco. I'd be surprised if you didn't. You got. You got to stick with your. Yeah, all that. Uh, what's your favorite animal? Cheetah. What's your What's your hidden talent? Ooh, hidden talent. That's interesting. Can you sing? Can you like do any other sports really well? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Do Cooking. Have... And uh, Call of Duty. Okay. Fair enough. Anybody wants that smoke? Come by. Okay. And last one. What's your biggest pet peeve? What annoys you the most? Oh, what annoys me the most? Ooh. Uh, what? Like in general, or yeah, like like, like a pet peeve areas? is like. So so I I don't know if you're familiar with the term, but like pet peeve is like what's something that like grinds your gears or like gets you like annoyed. Uh, like a lot of people say like bad drivers, or they'll say like. I don't know. Like for me, like I don't like mowing the lawn. I hate mowing the lawn. Like it's, you know, maybe hates a strong word, but I, I just don't like mowing the lawn, you know? So that's something. Ooh, pet peeves, pet peeves. Maybe traveling. I don't know. Is there anything when you go traveling? You know, actually you know what? It's, it's the plane. The people that's behind you are standing up way before you. And then they want to get out when they know damn well, we're all about to get out at the same time. And we're about to take the train and we're about to do everything the same goddamn time. That's actually my my pet peeve. That's that. Okay, I I will I will totally agree with that. I also don't like people who clearly go in the wrong uh, what is it zone on the airplane. Like you like oh, you, you know yeah, when you yeah, get yeah. on and someone's like in your seat or like in the row with you and like they clearly like didn't go in the right zone. You know they're like zone two's up right and like yeah. they'll, they'll have someone from like that like like zone three in the back and you're like how did you get here? I followed the rules. Yeah. I was like the first one in line. How did you get ahead? So oh I feel you on that. That's yeah. That's boy. I start throwing a lot of feints. That's what I call it. I look at him like what's up, bro? You know, just kind of feign him up a little bit. You know. 
That's sure. I think it was an old lady, so I'd feel bad doing that. But anyways, Yusuf, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we're looking forward to the fight, UFC Fight Night, March 23rd. If there's anyone you want to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. Oh, I'm, you know, I just love to thank my team and my people, you know, my, my, my crew that I've been with for, for a long time. So I appreciate them for, you know, just believing in me and, and sticking with me and all that stuff. So I can't wait to really make myself proud and make them proud on March 23rd, you know, and obviously you guys can follow me on Instagram at the Moroccan devil, you know, so I appreciate you guys and I appreciate the love and thank you to the fans and I can't wait on March 23rd.